Hello everyone, welcome back to Z Physics. Today we're going to be going through how to solve six marker questions. Now this video is particularly useful if you're doing the OCR physics specification. However, as always, the physics and the knowledge on how to answer questions is applicable to all exam boards. I'm going to be using an example from the OCR Physics A, um, AS Physics June 2017 paper, Depth in Physics. So let's get started by looking at my top tips on how to solve six marker questions. My very first tip is probably the most important one, and that is to read the question very, very carefully. Make sure that you don't miss any important bits of information and you underline everything that is required for you to answer. You'd be surprised by the amount of time a student might have missed a section. For instance, let's read for this question together. So a student wishes to investigate how the terminal velocity V of a metal sphere varies with the radius R of the sphere as it travels through a liquid. So that instantly is telling me that we're going to be measuring two quantities, terminal velocity, probably with a light gate, and the radius R, probably with a micrometer. It is suggested that V is equal to K times R squared, where K is a constant, V is the velocity, R is the radius. Well, I would instantly be thinking about Y is equal to MX plus C. In fact, even when I'm reading through the question, am I just right underneath that, that Y is equal to MX plus C, V is on the Y axis, R squared is on the X axis, the graph will be a straight line for the origin, and K will be the gradient. And I've not even finished reading the question yet. Well, let's finish it. Describe with the aid of a suitable diagram. Okay, this is brilliant. So what we need to do is have a suitable diagram of our experiment, how an experiment can be safely conducted. Notice the word safely. So we need to be talking about some safety precautions that will depend on the experiment, but we need to have a little section on safety. And finally, we need to include a section on how the data can be analyzed to determine the constant k. We've already started actually doing that just by reading the question. I'm going to need to make sure that in my data analysis, I include some really important statements such as if the graph is a straight line for the origin, that means that the linear relationship is correct and to also include my y equals mx plus c analysis and explicitly say what quantity the gradient is. Okay, now we have read through the question and we have a plan on how to answer this question. So let's do this. So the first part of our answer should be to describe with the aid of a suitable diagram how an experiment can be safely conducted. Well, here is our diagram. We have a long tube filled with a liquid. Now, why is it a long tube? We need to ensure that the tube is long enough for the sphere to reach terminal velocity. If the tube was only, let's say, this long, then it's possible that the sphere might not have had enough time to reach terminal velocity by the time we measure the, the actual velocity. The whole apparatus is clamped on a clamp stand, and this is to ensure that this is part of our safety net, essentially, just to ensure that we can conduct the experiment safely. Now, here is a really important tip. What we also need to do is measure the velocity. Now, the best way to measure velocity in almost all cases within experimental ex uh, extended six marker questions is to use light gates connected to a timer. Now, how does a light gate work? As the sphere is picking up speed, eventually reaching terminal velocity, towards the end of the tube, it will enter the region between the light gates. Now, there's actually a little laser which goes from one light gate to the other. As the sphere 
sphere reaches this region of here, it will actually trip the laser, so to speak, and the light gate will start timing. As the sphere escapes or uh, reaches the, uh, the, the other end or the end of the tube, or maybe the tube is, uh, is going even further, but we've just measured in this region, the timer will then stop. And for instance, it could display a time such as one millisecond, or uh, if it was going really, really fast, or 0.1 seconds, or another time like so. But the the timer will give us the amount of time that the sphere has spent within the light gate and we can use that to measure the velocity okay guys so so far we have a uh, label diagram and additionally that also has a safety component because we've connected the entire apparatus onto a clamp stand We've ensured that the tube is long enough for the sphere to reach terminal velocity. Now it is time to have a look at describing how this experiment can actually be conducted. The first part of any description of an experiment will be a list of measurements and what instrument will use to make those measurements. So let's have a look at measurements. So here is our list of measurements. First off, we need to measure the diameter of the sphere with a micrometer. I'm expecting the sphere could be a little bit smaller than a few centimeters and anything that's smaller than a few centimeters in order to reduce our percentage uncertainty, it is wise to use a micrometer to measure its size. We're also going to be measuring the distance traveled by the sphere within the light gate and I've called that distance D. On the diagram, this distance D is simply this distance that I've just shown on the diagram. Okay, we're also going to be measuring the time spent traveling through the light gate with the electronic timer, and uh, this will be given the symbol T. We'll be able to calculate the speed of the sphere then just simply using that V is equal to distance over time. And a really, really important tip for all six marker questions that involve an experiment would be to simply always write down the statement that we're going to be taking multiple measurements of all the quantities and then finding the average. Remember, anytime we take multiple measurements and then we average, we are minimizing any random errors that might be occurring during our experiment. And this is a really, really important part. So this is quite a detailed list of measurements, but I really want to ensure that you guys have the maximum chance of achieving the full six marks in those questions. And also to ensure that we get full marks, I've added a little bit of a safety section. So just to avoid spills or any equipment falling, I've said that I've used a secured clamp stand to actually fix the equipment. In general, in this experiment, we're going to be varying the radius, the radius of the sphere R, but we're, and we're going to be measuring the effect on the terminal velocity V. Now, part of this question is asking us how can the data be analyzed to determine the value of K in this equation. Remember, we have measured V, we've measured the diameter. So the first thing that we need to do would be to find the radius for each of our radii and our table of results using the fact that r is the diameter of 2. This may sound as uh, something relatively simple, but you'll be surprised when uh, this experiment is actually done how easy it is to forget that what you're measuring is actually the diameter and not the radius. After we've done this, what we're going to do is we're going to plot a graph of v on the y-axis. So we're going to have a graph of v on the y-axis against r squared on the x-axis. I'm going to plot our data points uh, if our absolute uncertainties are large enough. We may even uh, plot some error bars as well if we wanted to. Anyhow, there's a really, really important statement after we finish 
plotting this graph and that is that if the relationship is correct the graph will be a straight line through the origin and what I want you guys to do is to be adding a similar statement through virtually every single um, question that involves y equals mx plus c analysis and that is that if the relationship that's been suggested is correct the graph will be a, or the graph is a straight let's see i've written the graph will be a straight line through the origin now in this case we're assuming the graph is a straight line through the origin we've done our experiment correctly and if that's the case if v is on the y-axis and if r squared is on the x-axis, remember I can always add a plus zero, so this means that the graph will be uh, going through the origin, then what is left for my gradient is actually the value of the constant k. So in this case, the gradient m is equal to the constant k. Okay, guys, so just a little check that we've included everything in this question that's been required from us. First off, we describe with the aid of a suitable diagram how an experiment can be safely conducted. Yep, we've done that. We've included something on safety, and uh, we've also included a very detailed analysis on how the data can be analyzed to determine k, and in the end, k is equal to the gradient. Okay guys, so hopefully you found this video useful. If you have, please uh, give it a like and consider subscribing. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.